Hi there, I'm Eitan and welcome back to the Wix Wiz. Today I have an update for you from the release notes of the Velo reference and this is about the new uh, rich content viewer element API and this essentially will allow you to populate a rich content element using Velo code and not only using connection to a data set. This also opens up a window to doing cool manipulations and even populating a rich content element using your own personal data. So if you want to explore all that and more, let's get started. Okay, so let's hop in and explore this new API for the rich content element. And this is the first time I'm doing it, to be honest, so it's new to me as well. Uh, so we're going to explore and stumble upon things together. Uh, what I've done in order to get started is I've just set up a collection here in the CMS. Uh, under my collections, you can see the collection called example. And what I have in here is just one item with a rich content field. And I just wrote here some lore mipsum and formatted in different ways. And I added an image. So that's pretty much all the prep that I've done so far. And the next thing I want to do is add a rich content element to my website. Um, so let me go ahead and click Add Elements. And here inside of CMS, uh, you can see that we have the option to add in a rich content element. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And now, previously, what we would need to do is we would need to connect this to the CMS using a data set. OK, so that's what we would need to do previously. And now that there's an API, uh, we should be able to connect this using Velo code. Um, so let me go ahead and turn on dev mode, of course, and then we will have access to our code editor. And if I go ahead and I select this rich content element, then we can see it here uh, and it has this ID. I'm going to get rid of this one here and this viewer, and I'm just going to call this rich content just to simplify things. And in order to tap into this rich content and actually populate it with data, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a simple query. Um, so let me go ahead and delete some of this boilerplate code. And the first thing that I'm going to do over here is import Wix data. And then over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to query for our item in that collection. So I'm going to say const example query result equals two, and then we're going to have here await Wix data dot query, and the collection is called example, and we're just going to run find, and this should return that one item uh, that I have here inside of the collection. Uh, we're throwing a bit of an error here on the await because this needs to be an asynchronous function for this to work. Uh, once we get back that example uh, query result, what I'm going to say is const uh, rich content equals two example query result dot items zero. And I'm really only expecting to get one item back. And let me just double check that I got all the naming here correct. So I'm going to go here to databases and I can see here that the ID is indeed example and that for rich content, I can see I already made a typo. Uh, so let me just copy this over and replace this right over here. So it's a rich content, lowercase. Okay, awesome. So now that I have that set up, I'm going to first put in a console log to see what this rich content actually looks like. And I'm going to assign this rich content to our rich content element. So here we have rich content. Let me move this more to the center. And I'm going to say here that the dot content property OK, so that's the update that we have here uh, inside of the documentation. So dot content and this should be equal to rich content. OK, and theoretically, that's what we need to do in order to assign the data to the element. So let me go ahead and zoom back out and head into preview mode and see if we have any joy here with this new API. And we do. OK, so here you can see uh, the lorem ipsum. And you can see here the image as well. Uh, so that's really great. And let's take a look and see what this data actually looks like, because I'm quite curious. Um, so we could see here that we have nodes. 
uh, paragraph, nodes, whoa, zero, type, texts, etc. Um, yeah, lots going on here. So we have all these nodes essentially, and we have this metadata, created timestamp, updated timestamp, etc. And we have also this uh, document style over here, which doesn't seem to have any data in it. And the interesting thing to me about this is that theoretically, uh, we could also take some of our own data and we could turn it into formatted uh, rich content just if we had some understanding of how these nodes are supposed to be arranged. So technically, you know, I can create a new item here in the array with, let's say, type paragraph and then some kind of nodes and then some kind of paragraph data. Uh, let's see. So here, for example, we have image and we have nodes and then we have all this data. So let me just show you an example of like what I have in mind kind of. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to copy this JSON here and I'm going to go back into our editor. And then I'm going to go and create here a global variable. So const example rich content and i'm going to just paste so this is this this is technically all of the rich content that we had and if i go over here to the text let's say lorem ipsum and i say lorem ipsum bip bop boom okay and then instead of assigning the data that we query from the collection i'm going to assign this example rich text uh, rich content, sorry, to our um, to our element all the way down here. So let's comment out this query result for now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just comment this out. And here I'm going to have the example rich content instead. Okay, and if I go ahead and go into preview mode, And we can see that it's not working. Um, so somehow I managed to break it, I guess. Let's go back to the editor. Interesting. Okay, so this is all learning. So this is great. Uh, I'm wondering what I did that might have broken it. Let's see. So one thing that might be happening here is that we have this ID here in the metadata. Um, and what Wix might actually be doing is somehow checking to see if this correlates between if this actually came from a Wix collection. Is that what they're possibly doing? I'm going to dive in and try and drill down a little more here to see if I can get it to work. And I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I have made some progress. I don't know 100% if I'm successful yet, but I do want to share my understandings with you. So first of all, uh, if you take a look here, for example, at decorations, you can see here that it's supposed to have an array of some sort here that we didn't get the full data from within the Wix uh, developer tools. Um, so what I did is I went ahead and I published to live on the site, and then I took a look again at the data over here and I can see that I am getting some more data inside of the array. Um, so what I could do is I can essentially copy this object instead of the one that Wix provided in the developer tools and try and make changes to it and see if that actually allows me to populate the rich content. Um, so let me go over here uh, back to the editor. And instead of this example rich content that Wix provided, I'm going to switch it out for what we just got from the browser developer tools. And you can already see that there's a lot more here uh, than before. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to try and make a similar change. So bip, bop, boom. And now let's see again if this actually manages to populate the rich content element. So let me go here into preview mode. And there we go. So bip, bop, boom. <laughs> You could see here that essentially I made the change to uh, the rich content element. 
And I'll admit that this is a little convoluted. So you'd have to have like a pretty good understanding of all of these, you know, sub data types and how Wix is building out these rich content elements. But theoretically, this could allow you to take some of your some, let's say, third party data from another website and turn it into rich content and display it on your website, uh, which might be easier sometimes than displaying it, let's say, uh, in elements or something like that, if you're not sure exactly what the structure of the content is, because this is data in the end of the day, and it could be built more dynamically. So I could, you know, add additional paragraphs or remove them just based on what my needs are dynamically using code. Um, so I think it's definitely a cool direction that you can take things. Um, let me know in the comments below if you think you have a use case for this, uh, or if you have any questions that you'd want to explore further about this uh, new updated API. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this this short update. If you did, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.